Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and I welcome all of you back to another Chris Chan quickie reading. Now, first of all, you may be noticing that actually I'm using an entirely new microphone is because I think the actual cable for like my uh, my blue snowball mic to my computer has basically just gone bust. So I would be sort of a little bit stumped or I'd be rushing out to like uh, Curry's PC World to get like a new cable. Fortunately, I do have a bit of a solution, and that is my virtually untouched uh, Razer Volume 2 uh, Siren microphone. So we'll just simply have to use this. The only trouble with, like, using a different mic is that apparently I don't actually have, like, some sort of program to open up, like, a separate tab to know what the readings for my uh, microphone are as far as the auxiliary uh, uh, measurements as well as noise and the actual volume. So... I had to do like several tests and uh, just to do a little of um, readjustments via OBS just to make sure that this uh, microphone would actually pick up things. So that should be roughly that, as they say. Now, with that being said, I spent two hours last night talking about Chris and his relations to autism. And while this article is definitely going to be quite a lot shorter... It's nonetheless uh, indignant of Chris's sheer malignity in the face of something so brutally ridiculous. So, with that being said, for those who are, like me, uh, diagnosed with Asperger's Syndrome, I do apologize for what you're about to hear in this video, according to Chris. But just so you're aware, is that whether or not... Uh, you have Asperger's or not, just bear in mind some of the things that Chris says, because these are the sorts of things that... out. If if this was the only issue, Chris, like, prejudice Chris had towards other people, people would still view him as an asshole, but just keep that in mind, despite everything else he does and has done, and probably will do in the near future. Asperger's is nothing at all like autism. I have stated this fact over and over again in my replies to messages from people who tell me otherwise. I feel very sick and tired of hearing that false rumour that the two are anything to full similar. The great Christian Reston Chandler, who obviously knows more about the relation between Asperger's Syndrome and autism than actual scientists and psychiatrists who study it. And for reasons you are about to discover, ladies and gentlemen, Chris's hatred of Asperger's Syndrome is fundamentally nonsensical and makes Chris look just like a complete asshole. And I will explain why in a moment. Asperger's syndrome is the mildest form of autism, categorized by typical, i.e. not mentally the R word, to gifted intellect and no major difficulties in using language for basic needs. First identified in 1944 by Dr. Hans Asperger of Germany, it was unknown for decades in the English-speaking world, and was considered distinct from classical autism for years after that. It is now universally regarded by psychologists as identified with high-functioning autism, and the term has been depracted, or deprecated. According to Chris, however, having Asperger's is nothing like autism. Get it through your dang dirty skulls! His view of Asperger's Syndrome is extremely warped and inconsistent. He is easily offended by the suggestion that Asperger's is even remotely similar to autism. He varies uh, between outright denying that it is a part of the autism spectrum to idiotically confusing it with Alzheimer's disease. He also believes Asperger's sufferers are stealing the limelight from us autistics. Now, let me just... Let's start with this, because <clears throat> I don't quite really um, know exactly where I need to uh, begin with this, apart from the fact that, one, um, for someone who is on the autism spectrum, well, specifically Chris, considering he is on the autism spectrum, you might assume, although we'll see about that, you, but you might assume that Chris would actually have a fairly... A progressive and a very considerate uh, and a certain level of uh, of uh, of empathy towards people who are on the spectrum with him. You may say that because um, 
Chris should know fine well exactly what uh, the symptoms of his uh, condition are, and it would it would give Chris the sort of uh, ideas that you know what other people who have it might be just like him as well. However, for re other reasons we got into in the past, and for reasons we'll get to in the future, Chris, as it turns out, views people with autism as somehow his very worst enemies. He views them as windows to hell, and the fact that Chris actually has a, uh, a I think he has a cousin of his that is very, very severely afflicted by autism. Far, far worse than Chris does, but... Whether Chris even knows this or would care nonetheless, I will leave up to your decision. Because I personally like to imagine the idea that Chris fully knows this, but decides absolutely to take no notice and just completely, well, blacklist his cousin from anything resembling, you know, uh, relations to him. Now, again, I want to make something very, very clear, ladies and gentlemen, is that First of all, it's, it's it should be no wonder why Chris is largely um, like blacklist. Well, not blacklisted, but rather uh, uh, neglected by the the rest of his immediate family because one, his immediate family know perfectly well what Chris has done, and second, well, what do you expect? I don't particularly think that even people who were that severely affected by autism would want Chris around them anyway. So. Make of that what you will. But the other things I want to, uh, again, specify just for the sake of this, ladies and gentlemen, is that it makes Chris somehow even harder to forgive. And listen, there are many instances in Chris's history and his life where it would make the idea of forgiving him for his wrongdoings a challenge. Don't get me wrong. But there are also some things that you just can't really like meet Chris halfway on. I appreciate the people who try to, but an issue I run into probably more than any other is the fact that Chris is not sorry for the things that he says and he does, and he knows perfectly well they're horrible as well. So how are you supposed to meet somebody halfway who is not going to move an inch, if that makes sense? Unlike his issues with other races and homosexuals, Chris has never attempted to emulate or otherwise compromise his statements about Asperger's. Yeah, again, remember, he only emulates for any things like these when Chris realizes that, you know, it's going to make him look distinctly unpopular. Which may, un which may be another uh, narcissism as to why Chris just decides to accept them. Not because he genuinely believes he, he is going to be accepted by accepting them, but because he just thinks that, well... That's, if he does that, then everything will be fine. And however, with this, it's confusing as to why Chris would not budge. I mean, surely the same logic would apply, should it not? With the exception of one half attempt, which mostly ignores the issue at hand, for the sake of good PR, suggesting that it is his most, strong, his most strongly held prejudice. Yeah, that's a thing of it as well. PR and prejudice are not the sort of things that go together in the same sentence. Chris happens to have mild high functioning autism, a cornerstone of his identity because that's the diagnosis he received as a child in the late 80s. If he'd been born two de decades later though, it is quite likely he'd have wound up diagnosed with Asperger's, the Asperger's label he so fiercely detests. And he would probably be ranting about the autistics trying to steal his Aspie funder. Um... No, Chris, no. Because, one, trying to steal Thunder would mean to suggest that there are people who are in competition with Chris. There are no people in competition with Chris. Chris thinks that there are people in competition with him in any which way, but he's wrong about this. And I'll tell you just another thing as well, is that even if I was in competition with Chris... Hit my my ways and methods are nothing like his, from writing to art to reaching from 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 you know advertisement and all all that other good stuff. Chris is not competition. If Chris was competition, then it wouldn't be taking an incredible amount of time to actually overcome him. And that's not just that's for anybody out there for that matter who 
aspires to, you know, work in, in like writing or making comic books, trust me, Chris is like the very bottom of the pile. And it doesn't get any lower than Chris either. Chris on Asperger's. For some time, Chris referred to Asperger's as a disorder that affects the memory. On IRC, in his online autism quiz in the Sonichu number one official video book, and in his mailbag on Wikipedia, among other places, it appeared as if Chris was confusing Asperger's with Alzheimer's disease. An easy enough mistake for someone of his level of competence. <laughs> Not long after Chris began answering the mailbag, Asperger's became a recurring topic in the column. Numerous emails uh, doggedly attempted to correct his misconceptions, while in his replies, Chris became much more defensive and much less consistent in his arguments about why Asperger's is so different from autism. Eventually, he decided to settle the issue with a speculatory butthurt essay, revealing the real reason Asperger's grinds his gears. It's also worth mentioning that in Mailbag 17, Chris confirms that there will never be a solitude or roast you with Asperger's, but they may be human characters with the ailment. And those with Asperger's dare to try and take the shine and limelight away from us autistic people, not only with their social flaws and such possible similar traits to autism, but to shun us autistics by being better communicatively and mentally than us. Um, few, one or two comments are needed here. Chris seems to be under the illusion that actually, you know, people with Asperger's are much better at communicating and being cognitively less impaired than people with autism. That's not particularly very true. Secondly, Chris seems to think that, you know what, people with autism have, you know, these sorts of flaws rubbed in and Chris thinks that people with autism are just doomed from the very start. That's another very interesting catch-22 about this, is that while Chris is trying to make people with Asperger's look bad by saying that they're just stealing the limelight, he doesn't too do much in the favour of people with autism either. Because people might get the impression that people with autism, like Chris, are simply bitter and are too lazy to come up with any f form of self-improvement, but will only ever look for the like I said, the path of least resistance, the easy way out. And Chris is a bona fide's uh, definition of the path of least resistance, both physically and mentally. Chris, claiming that people with Asperger's are trying to steal his autistic thunder because they definitely want to suffer through a life of crippling social ignorance just to piss off an overweight man-baby. What can I say? In short... Chris doesn't understand that there is no real difference between his condition and Asperger's syndrome except the name and, more to the point, he wouldn't care anyway. He simply feels that people with Asperger's are receiving some measure of attention and sympathy that he is not receiving. Naturally, tarred rage ensues. In Mailbag 19, he even admits that the first thing he thinks of when he hears the term Asperger's is competing R-word. Wow, what an absolute dickhead. And you wonder, like I said before, ladies and gentlemen, is that if that's, if that's Chris's attitude towards <coughs> um, people with Asperger's, you can only wonder what it would be like if Chris was viewing uh, the eyes of people who are suffering from uh, scoliosis or Down syndrome. Does Chris think all of those people like him are competing and the R word? And by the way, in case you're for people who are wondering why I say the R word and why I'm not giving Chris a little bit less stick for saying it, because, you know, at different generations and you know what, people understand, like, by the modern day standards, that that word is still not bad. It's still it's still bad, but it's just basically I, the only reason why I never say it is because I don't want to come across as a hypocrite. So therefore, I won't. And to do that, I'm just going to not use that word because Honestly, I think the word itself is very cruel and is not particularly very fair. And bear in mind, again, I'm not competing with Chris, so I won't stoop to his standards, if that makes sense. Something that a lot of people would do well to adopt as well, not to compete with Chris. <laughs> 
in any capacity. As per his adamance that high-functioning autism and Asperger's are completely unrelated, Chris also point-blank refuses to acknowledge scientific research that contradicts his statements of so-called fact. Indeed, he eventually began totally ignoring any mailbag entries that included references to such papers. In a private email to Vivian G. from January 2010, he delivered an interesting spin on his feelings regarding the validity of that research. I still disagree with the scientists' regards of how long they may have stupid studied those psychological topics. Even if I am living a lie, I'd rather live this lie than believe that truth ever. I am resistant to the change. Well, we are aware about that. Well, apart from sometimes when Chris decides he wants to be wants to call himself Christine, just just for the sake of more social acceptance or. Well, again, we've sort of... I'm still very back and forth a little bit about the whole thing about transgenderism, especially in relation to Chris, specifically. But, yeah. yeah. But like I said, apart from sometimes when it doesn't, you know, immediately garner Chris some level of reward instantaneously. Chris's belief that he is somehow representing his fellow autistics in some sort of tribal conflict against people with Asperger's is entertaining on a couple of levels. Well, personally, I don't, but that's besides the point. Because, like I said before, yeah, yeah. One second. Right, sorry about that. Where were we? Okay, for one thing, any such rivalry is nothing but a figment of his overreactive imagination. Not shared by most people on the autistic spectrum, for another, people on all ends of the spectrum who've been exposed to Chris universally regard him as a revolting embarrassment to other people with the same condition. Well, my, my own personal opinion, ladies and gentlemen, is that I just sort of just decide to completely ignore Chris whenever he tries to make any statements about autism. I think the thing to do is just push him completely out of my mind. That is about as least significant uh, significant Chris's opinions are on things like uh, as on aut autism, Asperger's, or you know anything resembling the real world that is actually of consequence and importance. I just decide to ignore it because Chris, uh, if Chris is trying to influence people, well, it's not working. And second, I couldn't care less. I mean. How am I supposed to believe in Chris if I don't? You know what I mean? If I, How am I supposed to be convinced by someone when I know better and I know fine well that Chris's reputation would leave a lot to be desired? So, you know what I mean? What, 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 would, I, what would I want to take Chris's opinion seriously for when he just isn't willing to, again, move an inch? He's also just kind of bothered by the fact that it sounds kind of like Asperger's. Well, like I said there, it, that's, it, it, that sort of thing only matters to him, and it's something that just doesn't really matter for anyone else. Just because, you know, somebody is called Asperger's and stuff like that, then, you know, well, what, what's the issue? I refuse to let something uh, that has a name that sounds like a bad cut of cow meat and is not as special as us take our light away. Trust me, Chris. Uh, I, it, the the irony behind this statement is that if di if Chris right now did not have the light that's been on him for nearly twenty years, then nobody would care anyway. So Chris has uh, Chris's argument falls flat because Chris seems to think that um, he's special because trolls troll him and that people only look at him through morbid curiosity. Chris seems to think that that could be construed with actual fame, praise, and recognition. Chris has yet to realise that the burgers he usually shoves down his throat are often made of minced rump steak or ass burgers, if you will. Great point. Chris versus Autism Awareness Month. And here we go. Like I said, he, he, he doesn't do people with autism much favours either because they don't like Chris's attitude either. In April 2010, Chris uploaded his own version of a web ad for Autism Awareness Month to the Wikipedia. It featured another short rant in which he once again stated his belief that Asperger's has nothing to do with autism. 
and thus shouldn't receive any extra awareness. What about extra funding, Chris? Do you think, you know, they should receive less funding, you know, in schools and you know what I mean? Is, is, that, is that what Chris really believes now? This led a well-meaning volunteer worker to write him and try to correct his misconceptions. She didn't succeed. But their conversation does reveal Chris making some bizarrely contradictory statements, even by his standards. <clears throat> Among other things, he says that the notion of a total disconnect between Asperger's and autism is entirely his own invention, and nobody else led him to that conclusion. Hooray? But that doesn't stop it from being an undis indisputable fact. For your information, the fact of Asperger's being different from autism and of it trying to steal the light is of my own idea. I will never conform to such a blasphemous link of any kind between the two. Chris defining reality according to his whim as usual. <laughs> Thus far, Chris has not commented on the recent developments in psychology, psychology joining Asperger's and high-functioning autism together once and for all. And it remains unknown whether his attitudes here have softened as they had for the SLGBTQ plus community. And trust me, ladies and gentlemen, we will be covering this when it comes to like the actual autism tutorial that Chris did. But to be honest, that's really all there is to say technically on Asperger's syndrome generally when it comes to Chris. Is that Chris seems to think that just saying that there isn't a link must make it true. And unfortunately, despite um, Chris saying people, well, threatening people to believe him, it's not really work because Chris, it, it, it reveals a, a level of cynicism that Chris seems to think that if he shouts at people, that they will listen to him. But because they don't, it, but Chris should never, should, Chris would probably have made a better politician than he would, you know, a, a comic book artist. Because let's be completely real here, ladies and gentlemen. If Chris defies uh, people for what they say through facts and stuff like that, he would have made a perfect candidate for the Reform or the Conservative parties for the UK. So, bad luck, Chris. Y you chose the wrong line of work. You know, at wrong time, wrong place. So, I hope all of you guys have learned something from this. And I apologize in advance if you've been offended by Chris's attitude in this. Because, trust me, it, it's this is nothing new, but... Don't worry, I, I personally won't lose any sleep over this and you will do well but do well to sleep well at night knowing that this should not affect your sleep patterns either. So take care and bye bye for now.